thank you. I'll look for you on my list of participants. Okay, found you. And uh, you now are the co-host. Um, you're very free to start. Can you see the PPT? Yes. Yes. CC. Yes. 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 yes, we can see. Yes. Okay. Hello, Mrs. and Misters. We are Jose Molina and Natalia Cancino, the International Business Manager of Concha y Toro Vineyard, the Chile's leading wine producer. We are seeking to reinforce the entry in Austria through a joint venture with Andrew Hof Vineyard. But what we can tell you about us? Our company was founded in 1883 and has achieved leading position in the global wine industry thanks to its focus on excellence from the vineyard to consumers in many countries. Our brands towards the production of premium wines acclaimed throughout the world. And we have to mention that Concha y Toro has two brands in the Austrian market, and those are Casillero del Diablo and Marques de Casa Concha. On the other hand, through Andrelhof Vineyard perspective, they are a little vineyard with only 12 hectares located in the famous wine town of Gols near New Seattle's Lake. It's important to mention that they have the organic viticulture certification. Also, Andrew Hof produced 50,000 bottles per year, and nowadays they don't export their products. But what do we want? We want to create a strategic alliance in which each company adds some resource. On the part of Concha y Toro, we will convey the necessary know-how in order to improve both the production process in an economy scale way and the product itself, based on tactics to learn how to export and how to manage an efficient supply chain. In addition, we will invest buying some vineyards for them, giving them um, the opportunity to increase their productivity and the, the opportunity to increase their, their productive capacity and access new markets. The part of Andelhof, they will convey the knowledge regarding the national market in order to find a more profitable way to have a greater presence in Austria. Besides, they we will create a um, national television advertising campaign paid by us in which all products will be offered and supported by Andrelhof. With regard to this, it is important to mention that our credentials warranty the recently proposed. If we make a glass of our company, we are in the top five globally in sales volumes. This means that we have sales of approximately uh, 872 million of euros and a market capitalization of 1.4 billion of euros. We are in the number one in exports in Chile, number three in Argentina, and number six in USA. We are in the top five in the world's most admired wine brand in 2019, winning the second place in the category of world most powerful wine brand. We have a consolidated international presence. Uh, we have three production locations, uh, Chile, USA, and Argentina. In addition, we have 14 commercial offices, four of them in Europe, specifically in UK, Norway, Sweden, and Finland. And it is important to mention that we have 130 destination countries, included Austria. In relation to considered sales, in 2019, we obtained 940,800 millions 
of euros. The breakdowns of sales by region, it shows the importance of Europe as the main target market, uh, followed by Chile and USA. We sell 11.1 million cases in Europe, that what is equivalent in euros to 319,872 million. In the business model, we use a vertical integration model. This means that our products come from the buyer throughout the production process, then the supply chain, and then to the distribution in different countries. We must mention that we keep in mind high quality in all processes. About our sustainability vision, we have the objective to return what the earth has given us in each bottle. Our company has implemented a sustainability strategy based on six pillars what are focused on create value for each one of our suppliers, employees, environmental, society, customers, which is aligned with the United Nations Sustainability Goals and the vision of Andrew. This is the presentation of our company. Thank you for listening us. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, what was our first company? Um, could you stop sharing your screen, please? Thanks. All right, who would like to go next? We will go next. Not company. Okay, not company. I will make you a co-host then. Uh, Camila, are you here? Are you here? Yes. Or should it be one of your colleagues? Yes. Please make me me co-host. Mm -hmm. Okay, I will do that. I found you mm -hmm. on the list. And you now are the co-host. Thank you. Welcome. Give me one. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, good evening over there in Austria. Um, I'm going to introduce myself and, and my workmate. I'm Sebastian Guerrero. She's Camila Studillo. We are a student of the University of Valparaiso, and today we're going to present the company what we represent called Not Company. About us, um, it is a food company that makes all our products uh, by artificial intelligence on plant -based. This company was created to struggle in again the, against the way how we feed, not using animals and not making any pollution to the ecosystem. The way we do it, uh, we have created an artificial intelligent robot who is prepared to make similar equations in food, such as mayonnaise, uh, ice cream, meat, and, and uh, the last one is mayonnaise, milk, and ice cream. It, um, its name is Giuseppe, and he's the chef behind all our products. Not company is not a traditional food company. Um, our company uses technology to make the same products that we love to eat in a natural way. About the company, the founders, this business was made by three people, three Chilean, which they all did a post degree at very important university in the USA. The first one is Matthias Miocini, the CEO of the company and the person who made the connection with the other two. The second one is Karim Pichara, doctor in computer, and who created Giuseppe. The last one is Pablo Zamora, doctor in plant and biotech, and who set up the food mixes. The central laboratory is located in Kling, Chile, uh, where we produce artificial resources to generate different products. Uh, also, we export to Brazil, Argentina, USA, USA sorry, and Mexico. Um, the 50% of sales are in Brazil and Argentina. Let's talk about our products. First, we have the nut milk. Uh, milk was, was, was produced by plants. Secondly, we have the nut mayo, the most known product. And thirdly, we have a uh, nut ice cream on three basic flavors. It is important to say that the nut mayo was the first product on our company, with which the company launched itself on the market, uh, getting the captured attention of the Chilean uh, customers. 
Another important fact is to say that the company achieved the 12% of the participation in the Chilean mayonnaise market between the years 2017 and 2018. Um, our costs to produce nuts mayo are 33 cents, and regular companies spend uh, 74 cents. We use 32 liters of water to produce nuts mayo, and regular companies use 194 liters of water to produce. And we finally, we reduce the 37 of carbon dioxide emission in contrast with other companies. What makes us different? It's our innovation and quality. Yesterday we took, food, we took food out of the animals, now we are taking animals out of the food. We do not pretend to replace the food, we just want to make a change uh, the way how the food is made by using artificial intelligence. Also 92% consumption of the not mayo are not vegetarian or vegan. Uh, people don't even realize the different in flavor. How did we start financially? We started with an investment of $250,000 uh, by the Silicon Valley Biotech Accelerator. After that, our company got financed with an investment of $30 million to expand all our products by the um, world most millionaire man in the world and creator of Amazon, Jeff Bezos. Nowadays, we are currently in 2,200 stores throughout Latin America. In continuous growth and development, this is why three big aliases have been made. Uh, first, with Burger King, uh, with the product and not cheese. Secondly, with Papa John's, with not meat. And then uh, Domino, with the new vegan completo. Completo, here in Chile, it's a very traditional food. Finally, I would like to show a phrase that was said by our CEO that reflects the importance of changing the way the food industry produced today. So, thank you for your attention and see you at the negotiation. Thank you so much. All right. Who would like to go next? Um, we could from Austria, Jenny and I. Yes. Right. Who shall I make the co-host? Um, Jennifer Marinkovic. Okay. I will look for her on my list. Um, can we go next? Um, we will have we'll have our students um yeah first and then you will go next yes um i will note down your name as well okay then you'll be the next one okay um jennifer i have you entered your full name or is it just the first name just, i'm sorry it's just jenny no. It's not okay, I'm sorry. I found you now. Okay, perfect. <laughs> so you are the co-host. So okay. So first of all, sorry that we cannot share our camera because mine is not working, and Jenny tried, but she has bad connection. So we'll just do it by audio. <laughs> Okay, so uh, we will uh, present you the company Zotter. It's a chocolate company, chocolate producing company uh, located in Austria. Uh, my name is Patricia Mitzin and my co-host uh, co is Jennifer Marinkovic. So Jenny will start off by telling you a little bit about the Zotter company. Thank you, Patricia. So um, here we can see um, some hard facts about the Zotter company. Uh, membership of World Trade Organization. Cocoa countries of Sota Company are um, Guatemala, Brazil, um, Madagascar, Ghana, Peru, and so on. Their production volume is approximately 200 tons of cocoa beans and 150 tons of cocoa butter. 
Can you hear me? Yes. 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 Yeah. So, um, yeah. Um, the assortment is over 500 different types of chocolate and in addition, individual desired chocolates that customers can invent themselves. Ingredients are approximately 400 different organic ingredients. Their turnover 2018-2019 are 24 million euros. Employees, they had uh, employees around 200 employees um, at the Griegesburg in Styria site, including seven trainees and 20 employees in Substyri Chocolate Theatre Shanghai in China. Chocolate shop theatre and tenants, 2017 visitors and per year. Uh, and energy generation, the manufacturer is 16% and the edible so 100% energy self-sufficient through the use of photovoltaic system, steam power plant and energy. Their sales are approximately 4,000 sales offices worldwide and 90% in German speaking countries. So something about history. Um, the company was founded uh, in the year 1987 uh, by the family, by the Sutter family, and 26-year-old Joseph Sutter decides that he wants to implement his own ideas. So he did it together with his wife, um, Ulrike Sutter, and then they opened the Sutter confectionery in Graz, in Austria. Um, in the year 1992, uh, Josef Sotter began producing chocolate in the back room of his pastry shop in Austria and Graz and invented handmade chocolate. So in the year 1996, Josef Sotter had to filter for bankruptcy. Um, so three out of four benches will be closed. Failure becomes one of the most formative life ex experiences for the Sotter family. And in the year 1999, uh, the Sotters decided to focus entirely on chocolate. So in the year 2001, Sotters started to travel and grow in countries. Um, for example, Brazil, Peru, uh, India, and so on. So he wants um, to do origin at the raw material and seeks direct contact with the farmers in order to improve both the quality of life of the farmers and the quality of the raw materials. Then uh, in the year 2004, Sota switched the entire ranch to fair trade. Um, and in the year 2007, uh, Chocolate Shop Theatre, visitors can see live in production experience how chocolate is made from the bean and snack on intermediate products, such as roller powder, for example. Then 2012, best chocolate manufacturer in the world. Patricia? So to the recent days now, or to the recent years, um, 2014 was quite a breakthrough for Zotter as they opened a second uh, chocolate theater in Shanghai. Then they also went on to open and launch the Zotter Chocolates West in the West market in 2015. Um, they were also one of the top 25 chocolatiers in the world in 2015. They had an expansion of their chocolate shop here in Austria. And in 2017, they celebrated their 30th anniversary. Um, yes, so in 2019, Sauter opened uh, the season with even new handmade chocolates, 18 new handmade chocolates. Um, what is our market strategy to enter the market in um, South America? Uh, we want to propose uh, to open up an online shop with references to different stores and coffee shops um, that could offer the Sauter chocolate. This, for example, uh, what you can see is just a picture of the current US online shop, um, just also in the Spanish language. Can we go on with the page? <laughs> Sorry. Thank you. Um, another idea or maybe also additional would be to offer the Sauter chocolate directly in organic shops or organic stores and organic um, cafe shops, such as the El Arbol in Guelen, 
uh, street and this is a vegetarian restaurant we found out uh, we've had food store in the restaurant itself they offer already organic fruits vegetables natural cosmetics um, and so on so this would be perfect um, restaurant for us and so, um, store then there is the planta maestra which um, appears to be an organic shop with fruits vegetables whole grain foods and cosmetics and the La Chakra, which is also a vegetarian cafe, and uh, they sell uh, they sell a lot of organic products. So this is our um, this is our idea of how we can enter the market in South America with softer chocolate. Um, thank you for your attention, and um, we are looking forward to the negotiations. Thank you so much. All right, then we already know who the next presenters will be. Could I just ask you to stop sharing your screen? Oh, thanks. All right, and uh, now I will create the new co host. Okay. Uh, uh, next, can can we do it from Chile? Um, I think um, one of you, Francisca. Sure, I sure I pronounced it incorrectly. Uh, um, I think you mentioned yeah. before that you want to go next. Francisca Molina. Yeah. Or did I? Am I mistaken here? So, who would like to go next? We, me, Stephanie, oui. and Francisca. Ah, all right. Um, who will be the co-host? Me, Stephanie. Okay. Just a sec, I'll make you the co-host. Okay. Just need to find you in today's very long list. Okay, found you. And you are the co-host. Mm, okay. Yeah. Um, hello, everyone. I'm going to introduce myself and my workmate, uh, Francisca Molina, and she is my workmate, Stephanie Montoya. We are students of University of Valparaiso, and today we are presenting the company, what we represent, called Emiliana Vineyards. Well, located in the main valleys of Chile, Emiliana is characterized by producing only organic and biodynamic wines in a way that helps preserve the natural balance of life, human beings, and the environment. Producing wines in this way makes them healthier, more unique, and of better quality in the end. Other ones have been awarded prizes recognitions that validate their quality. The most important wines critics and the most respected competition have given all brands remarkable scores. The objective is to create high quality wines that compete with any wines in the world, respecting the cycle of nature. History. Emiliana Vineyards was founded in 1986 with the purpose of producing exceptional wines. Over the years, the company has presented many advances. As you can see, the existence of this company is from the 90s until these years. The main export market uh, for Emiliana Vineyards during 2019 are the United States, Denmark, the Netherlands, Canada, Finland, and Japan. The main business of this company uh, correspond to export bottled wines and which raw materials is the grape and mainly of its own production. The main activity for Emiliana Vineyards is producing organic wines, commercialization of export wines, our vineyards either own or lease to a third party. 
most of the revenue recorded by our company comes from the sales of bottled wine and in second place bulk wine in addition to the royalty of brands collection. The total income of the export of the export market amounted nineteen million four hundred forty seven thousand four hundred sixty eight million dollars as of december thirty one twenty nineteen while in twenty eighteen the amount was eighteen million fifty six thousand four hundred and three million dollars these numbers represent an eighty seven point forty two percent of total revenue in twenty nineteen and an eighty four point zero two percent in twenty eighteen which means an increase of seven point seventy percent Distributed sales of bottled wine are presented on these slides. It is important to mention that we increased our result before tax by 19.39% with respect to the result obtained in 2018, reaching $1,2,791 million. On these slides, you can see the increasing levels of sales during the years. Sales in Europe total $10.88 million with a volume of 325,000 9 liter boxes while the sales in the USA total $6.5 million with a volume of 170,000 9 liter boxes. Both, mar both markets contribute to a solid result within our income. Sustainability is our fundamental pillar when reflected in the decisions made and actions taken. This is the way that Emiliana guarantees quality and the way to ensure business in the long term. On these slides, you can see some of the results of our environment responsibility. And Emiliana believes that only through a sustainable, organic, and biodynamic agriculture can more healthy, balanced, and efficient spaniards are obtained, which, which translate into a better quality of the grape and therefore of the wine. Thank you for your attention. See you at the negotiation. Thank you so much. Uh -huh. Okay, who'd like to go next? Kira from Chile. Yes. Um, will you be the co-host? Eh, Patricia Estudillo. Your decision. Patricia. Quick question, can we go after them, please? Yes, you can. Will you be the co-host? Yep. Felipe, okay. Yep. I will write that down. Thank you. Welcome. Catalina, are you going to be the co-host? Or will it be your colleague? to share the screen. Okay. Um, what's her what's her full name so I can find your colleague on the list? Patricia Estudillo. All right. Okay, perfect, found her. And Patricia, you are the co-host. Good evening, my name is Costanza Galan, and today we're a teammate, Catalina Santelices, who went to introduce you Tika. Tika is a national company that sell artisanal healthy products and they're very friendly with the environment and animals. Good afternoon. Today we are going to start to talking about Tika Roots. Tika is a Chilean enterprise that was founded in 2009. This company born like a dream and thanks to concepts such as innovation and healthy food, Tika has revolved the national markets and nowadays is the leader company of the healthy snack in Chile. Tika have more than 700 points of sale in Chile and more than 5,000 sales worldwide. There has been rich in new places and other present in our continent. This company exports successfully their products to different countries around the world, such as Germany, Italy, Spain, France, Uruguay, United States, Korea, and others. 
Well, the mission of the company is mainly focused on constantly creating and innovating new snacks using only natural ingredients to always deliver the best quality products to their consumers. As a vision, Tika wants to contribute to the preservation of different kinds of plant and vegetables. They want to be part of our Beloyak heritage of our land. That is why they promote to work with the small farmers who take care of the better way of the ground. Apart, they are very proudly to work with these hidden treasures. Okay, so today we are going to present the start product of the company, uh, Tika Paragonia. This product is a revolutionary combination of five crunchy chips made from colorful native vegetables. Tika Paragonia is a gluten-free product low in cholesterol, sodium, fat, and without additives. This product is 100% natural. Tika Paragonia is the favorite product of the consumers around the world due to its delicious, tasty, and its elegant and innovating aspect. Nowadays, the company exports more than 500 of this product per month to USA. We're talking about the strength and opportunity. Tika have unique qualities and characteristics in their products. One example of this is that all day brown are gluten-free and vegan. This is so important because people is concerned to consume healthy products nowadays. They say they prefer eat healthy food instead of fast food. The 90% of consumers say they want to eat healthy food almost all the time, and another 63% say they want to eat healthy food all the time. And that is why it's so important that all elaboration is 100% natural. Apart, they innovate their packaging. They have a new cotton system that maintains all the qualities all, all the time. Apart, they are very tasty and healthy, and that makes it perfect for any time of day. Okay, in the last time, the company has exported more than $252,000 in fat value per year, as we can see in this graphic. In the next graphic, we can see the countries where Tika exported successfully in the year 28. In this year, the company exported $252,000 and countries like Australia, Korea, and USA had the main export of the company but also we can see a participation of countries such as Brazil, Uruguay, and New Zealand. And finally, in this graphic, we can see the increase that have had TICA in the salty snack in Chile between the years 2013 and 2016. In these years, we can see an increase of 0.5, and today the company has at least 20% of the snacks market in Chile. Since this company started, it has only had increases as to its participation in both the national and international markets. We're talking about the future. Tika wants to be in 30 countries in a period of five years. And this is very possible because they have been growing at 40% annually for the last couple of years. Even they donate a 1% of Tika Patagonia sales to different kinds of projects. Including nowadays to the world pandemic, they're still exporting products to different kinds of countries. And all the funding comes from, from LAQ Consulting. This has been our presentation. I hope you like it. Thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. All right. Then, Felipe, I will make you the co-host. You said you wanted to go next? Yeah, sure. Please. There you are. Find you, and you now are the co-host. Thank you. Welcome. Can you see the screen? Or yeah. Yes. Nice. Oh yeah. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, hello. Can you hear me? Is it good? Yep. Okay, uh, good afternoon, everybody. We are Sebastian Rivera and Felipe Pichara, and now we are representing Capel Cooperative. A cooperative is a society made up of a set of members who meet in order to achieve the same objective, walking together in the same direction in order to obtain the maximum benefit. 
We are dedicated as Cabell to the production, distribution, and transformation of goods related to Pisco and wines. What is Chilean Pisco? Well, Chilean Pisco is an alcoholic drink, uh, which is a variety of uh, grape brandy produced by the distillation of wine from certain grapes. The grapes we use are Muscat of Alexandria, uh, Pink Muscat, and the Toronto variety. Pisco is considered a high alcoholic beverage, and the alcoholic beverage determines how good is the quality of Pisco. Now some products that we produce are rum, sparkling wines, wine, pisco and cocktails. And here are the products that we as Capel want to export. The first one is the 40 degree alcoholic, 1000 cc special edition wine, which this product is by number in color, a fine fruit aroma and a hint of fine wood in a bottle with a unique design created by a Rapa Nui artisan from Easter Island, Iceland. Next, we have the Capel 35 degree. This Pisco uh, have a great character, elegant in color, and with an incomparable color game by the American all good. But um, finally, we have the Capel 40 degree double distillated. Uh, it's originate with the Pedro Jimenez grape variety, which is characterized by his neutrality. The Pisco rests in styling steel bats to preserve his purity and to ensure the quality of the final product. Next slide, please. Now are some facts. We are the country that consumes and produces the most Pisco in the world. In 2016, our company sold 110 million USD. 60% of the natural market are represented by Pisco sales, which 65.7 million are represented in the natural market and 24.6 million are from export. One of the goals that our company Cabell have is to grow in the export of bulks and grow strong in international markets. Therefore, the government have supported our company in many different projects to make Pisco famous worldwide. To set an example, we made a strong entrance into the Polish market in the year 2018 with the aid, of course, of the Chilean government. In the global Pisco industry, Capelli is positioned as one of the most awarded uh, Pisco companies in the world, receiving from 2000 until today 109 awards that reflect the great work done in 79 years. The most important awards due to the importance given by the world of the Pisco industry are the gold medal uh, in the selection of spirits awarded by Pisco Alto del Carmen, and with, same, and with the same recognition in the Catador contest, and both were in 2017. We have many certificates, and the first one is the Fair for Life Recertification Fair Trade and Social Responsibility Seal. Uh, we won this certificate in 2017, and it's accredited by the IMO Chile. Secondly, we own the in-depth certification, and that means that our cooperative uh, has better relations and com communications with the state. Then we have the APL category granted by Corfo, that is a big institution supported by the state. And this APL category means that during the production process, we maintain a clean production in all the aspects. The other one uh, is the HACCP issued by Vero Veritas, and that gave us a trust seal with our product and also generate confidence and facilitates the export and import processes. Well, due to the Economic Association Agreement of 2003, Chile has no duties to export Pisco to Austria. So the reduction schedule was 1% uh, uh, gradually over six years. That's our cooperative. I hope you like it and thanks for listening to us. Thank you. <coughs> thanks so much. All right. Um, here, um, here, here from Santiago. Um, will you be the co host? Me. All right. <coughs> So, you are the co-host. Yes. <clears throat> Can 
you see it? Okay. Yes. Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Um, okay, good afternoon. Um, we are from the, the University of Valparaiso from Santiago and our company is Colum. Well, some brands of Colum are the Colum, Colum, Colum Light, Kids Colum, Rio Bueno, Fundo, uh, um, Fundo Los Alerces. That's the main of the main uh, brands of that of that company. Okay, so we want to export the cheese called uh, butter cheese and it's very creamy, has a lot of flavor and also it's lactose free. Well, the productive process of Colum has a ninth part. First, the milk production made by cooperatives, the milk transportation and traceability to the plant's Colum. Every day Colum collects milk in the different fields of the cooperative and it is distributed to the different plants which are concentrated in La Unión and Rio Bueno. The third step is the milk reception, the start milk, the quality assurance. Uh, the five is the pasteurization and uh, standardization. Um, next, please. Uh, the industrial production, the quality assurance in the final product, uh, the logistic and distribution products to the main sales places, and finally, the consumption of the product. Well, the packing. Uh, there exists two types of, of, of packages of flying field. The first one is, is, lam is laminated butter cheese, which come in packages of 150 grams, 250 grams, 500 grams, and 4 kilograms. And the second one is pieces of butter cheese, which come in packages of 3, 4, and 10 kilograms. The national sales and international sales. Well, well, Colum has various forms of sales. Both sales, national and international, has contracts with, with wholesalers, such as supermarket, uh, supermarket chains, distributor, and merchants. In export, the Colum has presence around the world in 19 countries located in Asia, Asia, America, and Africa, with its products included milk, cream cheese, cheese, and yogurt. Well, in in little words, Colum uh, is a cooperative has been a pioneer in opening different export market with a department since 1986, the rating national recognition. Our exportable product offering covers a wide range of questions. Although there are standardized formats at formulas, uh, Colum can adapt its offer to the requirements of a specific market. Here we can see some country that Colum, uh, that Colum work and export, uh, export their product like Turkey, China, the United States and others. Well, as you can see, Colum has a big sense of responsibility and sustainability to add, val to add value to the uh, activities of, of the company. They have six sustainability decisions, uh, efficiency, manual management, liquid industrial waste, uh, protection of primary forests in the ground, and the most important is animal care. Well, in the graphic, it can be seen that for seven years, the growth of, of Colum in the Chilean milk industry has been increasing with a participation that goes from 20.7% to 27.2%, reaching in 2016. In this graphic, we can see how the largest production of Colum is concentrated this year in fluid milk, yogurt and dairy drink, and cheese. The letter we, with uh, 32,408,059 kilograms only in 2018. 
well, Kowloon has won uh, several awards and the most important app, uh, Red Track 2019 uh, Reputation Award and GFK and Edimark. So thank you, that was our presentation. Thanks so much. Now one presentation from Austria. Sure. Um, will you be the co-host or who shall I make the co-host? Yes, I will be the co-host. Okay. There are only my initials, MKA. I okay. found you already. It's easy to find. <laughs> so you are the co-host. Thanks. Welcome. So, also from my side, good afternoon and good evening. Uh, my name is Martin and my co-host is Anatol. And today we want to talk about Kreisel. Uh, who is Kreisel? Kreisel was founded in 2014. So it is a very, very young company. And it was founded in a very small village in Austria called Rheinbach. And it is in the north of Austria and one of the first project was they built a Porsche 911 with uh, only with an electric motor and this car has a range of 400 kilometers and it also has less kilograms than the original. In 2017 they built a whole new headquarter with a factory with a battery sample line and this is also located in Rheinbach. Now there are also many well-known investors, but Anadol will talk about that later in the financial situation. What are the products of Chrysler? Uh, there are two main products. This is the automotive battery cell and also battery packs. They also sell their licenses so that other companies can build their batteries. And they also have two new projects. One is the Chimero. Uh, Chimero is an electrical storage where you can load your car. And there is also included a fast charge. So you can load your car in around two hours and the battery is also full. The second project is Mavero. Mavero uh, are battery cells for your home where where you can storage the, the electricity and you can use it later for your own home. All right, now to the financial situation. Um, in 2017, 15% of Chrysler were um, acquired by Patrick Knapp Schwarzenegger. He's the nephew of uh, the former governor of California, Arnold Schwarzenegger. I think you all know him. Um, in September 2017, Chrysler moved to a new 7,000 square meter headquarter, which is also situated in uh, the village it was founded in. The, since there are high investments uh, in equipment and employees, our company has a high cost. And this is also the reason why we haven't gotten any real profits so far, because we just it's too expensive at the moment. But we've already set the seed for the future, so to say. And on the next slide, we will talk about our market entry strategy. Uh, we want to increase the electrical, uh, the electrical mobility infrastructure by 2021. So we want to make sure that both in Austria and possibly in Chile, we can increase the net the infrastructure for e-mobility. And currently with our Chrysler electronic charging station, you can quick charge your car uh, three, 300 kilometer radius uh, charge in about two hours, which is um, currently very competitive. Now our plan for Chile especially is to build up a new plant uh, with a focus of about 15 years, which is supposed to be another battery assembly factory. Uh, we want to create around 500 new jobs and the, the whole investment is supposed to be about 1 billion euros over the whole time span. Um, thank you all for being here with us today. We're looking forward to the, to the negotiations.
All right, thank you so much. Who would like to go next? We have four presentations to go. Any volunteers for the next presentation? We still have two Austrian companies and two Chilean companies. Hello, here. You can go now. Hello. <clears throat> I'm trying to you, where are you? Um, can you speak again, please? Is that you, Tamara? Um, yeah. Natalie. Natalie. All oh, right. Now I can see you. Wonderful. And uh, will you be the co-host, Natalie? Uh, Me, Tamara. 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 Okay, perfect. Tamara, I will make you the co-host. Thank you. Right. And you are the co-host. Can you see the presentation? Yeah. Yes, very nice. Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tamara Duarte, and my partner that is joining me today is Natalie Valenzano. We're going to present you the product that we choose, uh, Tamaya Juices. Okay, the product that we are going to present to you today is part of a big company of Chile called Ayanza. Ayanza is a natural fall company with more than 65 years of history, which has contributed in important to development of the agro-industrial sector in Chile and Peru. In 2018, Ayanza through its company Patagonia Fresh acquired the brand uh, of the beauty company that produces 100% natural premium use. Next. The principal characteristic of the product is the premium category. Um, that's the insight that the business unit manager of Ayanza Foods gave to the public. He said that they wanted to the product to participate in market in, in which is already present um, but without neglecting his its premium category. Tamaya is focused in producing super premium juice with fresh fruit from the highest quality. The use are 100% pure, elaborated in base of super fruit. On this side, you can see the web page of the pro in which the brand present all the all the characteristics. Added to the principal characteristics, the products are fresh fruit, no sugar added, no preservatives, no artificial colors, no artificial flavors, not from concentrate, vegan and gluten free. Okay, Tamaya use has six different flavors. This fruit too, blueberry use and cherry use, has the characteristic of being a natural sort of antioxidant. The outcome is a super premium use with a smooth and slightly na a sweet natural taste. These other four flavors are Sauvignon, Moscatel, Malbec, and Syrah. If you know about wines, you must know that these four are varieties of wine grapes, and this four has the similarity mm -hmm. of giving a natural source of polyphenols in each bottle. All the fruits of Tamaya juices are being obtained from the northern and southern Chilean territory. Why is our pro attractive? Tamaya juice is sold under the slogan of being 100% natural. And compare it to another to another juice. This one has a half of a kilo of fruit in eight bottles. 
about the market, there is an opportunity in a lot of areas. There is people with fitness lifestyle, um, also premium customers like people with high status that constantly visit hotels and restaurants. Um, and also the, there is a growing preoccupation of having a healthy life uh, in, in the youngest people around the world. So people with healthy lifestyles concerned about their diets uh, are potential customers too. Exportation. Tamaya use are in the Eureka channel, some supermarket, and in the export market. Main, the only Chilean juice that are exported in their consumption formats, glass bottle and cans. Among the contrary, it is exported to Dubai, Korea, China, Japan, and the US by Amazon Online. Tamayo use and his quality was highlighted by the Dream Me magazine in the US. We choose them as uh, the best 100% natural use in the world. And here we can see a slide of the article that Drink Me magazine made about the product. Um, this is a very important issue, issue to the brand because the magazine makes reviews of different products and has a lot of followers. So this is a, a way for showing you that the Tamaya Juices is a wonderful brand with a um, wonderful product. Thank you for your attention. Thanks for your attention. Thank you so much. So who would like to go next? We are ready. Agroberry. Okay, will you be the co-host? And uh, Luis Olivares, please. Mm -hmm. Okay. Luis, you are the co-host. Okay, thanks. Okay. Hello, everyone. I am Luis Alberto Olivares. Thank you for this opportunity. It is a real pleasure to be here with you. Today, with my partner, Ignacio Vergara, we will present AgroBerries company, its product and its development. Uh oh. Uh oh. Sorry. Sorry, I have a problem with my presentation. What? The <laughs> Sorry, my presentation is bad. What? Maybe you should download the PPT. My internet is good. Let me see. Okay, try again. <laughs> Okay, all again. Well, hello, my name is Luis Alberto. Uh, thank you for this opportunity. It is a real pleasure to be here with you. Uh, today with my partner, Ignacio Vergara, we will present AgroBerry's company and uh, its product and its development. AgroBerry is a Chilean expert and company of fresh berries 
that during 20 years has focused on delivering high quality product and excellent service to its customer and producers. Of course, all of this according to their needs. The company is committed to having a relationship based on trust, where compliance with commitment and product responsibility has been a fundamental pillar. Agroberry has been a relevant player in the export of blueberry, sorry, berries, uh, locally and worldwide, acquiring different farms both in Chile and abroad as well as expanding its operation to Argentina, Mexico, Peru, and the United States. The product that we want to show are blueberry. These beautiful fruits are bushes that grow in the Kubler region of the Northern Hemisphere. The color of these berries come from anthocyanin. It is a natural pigment that gives them their characteristic dark blue color. <clears throat> This particular fruit is not native to Chile. These fruit, the uh, blueberry are native to the USA. Over 110,000 hectares are grown around the world, uh, with Chile ranking as the second largest producer with almost 16,000 hectares. Blueberry were introduced to Chile in 1979. And at the present, there are over 50 different varieties uh, of blueberry under cultivation in Chile. On the other hand, blueberry are very low in carbohydrates. They are especially rich in vitamin C. However, the, the nutritional characteristics for which they famous worldwide are their highly antioxidant properties. The fresh blueberry can be consumed in many ways. It has a decent shelf life, post harvest, and innumerable uses, but has fresh fruit process for using the confectionery, veins, and cooking. The main export market for Chile are Europe and the United States. Today, Agroberry already has export to Germany, Italy, and Spain. Due to the excellent nutritional qualities of this fruit, the global consumption has increased significantly in the recent years. This is the blueberry calendar. Chile is one of the few countries in the world that such as an extensive blueberry season from October to March approximately. In addition, because the larger consumers of the blueberry are in the northern hemisphere, this position Chile is one of the most important exporters of blueberries worldwide. And there is the Chile map and the own production. Agroberry has more than 550 hectares of own production. The main areas of production are located in the south central part of all country. It's due to the Mediterranean climate. And the production of the local farmers is essential to achieve the quantities that are necessary to export. The prices on the side. Uh, the fresh blueberry can be sold in different ways. The most common format in the European market is finding a box of 125 grams, around one half euros or two euros, and the prices may vary. But the most typical format is finding 12 boxes of 125 grams, around 21 euros. We greatly appreciate your attention. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you so much. Okay, so two presentations to go now. Um, who would like to go? I would like to go first. Okay, Anita, will you be the co-host? Will you share yes. your presentation? Okay. So you are the co-host. Thank you. Welcome. So thank you for attending today. Uh, my name is Anita Davidovich and I'm looking forward to talking to you about Lina. In 1910, Rudolf Lina Sr. and his wife Teresa bought a bedding shop. The range at the time included bed feathers, down mattresses and even iron furniture. 
the bat production was nearly introduced. From the beginning, the company focused on advertising with catalogs. Parts of the former headquarters were destroyed in the Second World War, and shortly, shortly afterwards, the son, Rudolf Leiner Jr., took over the company and began to rebuild it. Mattresses and couches were added to range, and the production was gradually increased. The first branches were built in Wiener Neustadt in 1960 and in Bruck an der Moor in 1962. 1970 was expanded to Wells, then 1971 in Linz, and then Graz and Judenburg. As of 2016, there were 17 line of furniture stores all in Austria, in all federal states except Vorarlberg and Burgenland. The liner group had around 2,900 employees in 2006. Together with the furniture store chain Kika, the company was owned by the South African Steinhoff Group. 2013 to 2018. Due to the balance sheet scandal at Steinhof, the Kika Liner Group was sold to the Signa Group of the Tyrone real estate investor and entrepreneur Rene Benko. The Liner Company was family owned from the start and was continued from generation to generation. This means that the line of furniture stores have the longest tradition on the Austrian furniture market. 100 years of company history also stands for 100 years of family tradition. As early as 1910, the line of senior concept was beautiful line and individual furnishing, highest quality at the best price. The liner company, which is now in the fourth generation, has followed the principle for many decades until today. Line focused on the feel good house has always relied on comprehensive customer service, well trained staff, the highest level of adversary skills personal support and exclusive brands in premium quality. The liner range includes thousands of products for all needs and price ranges and offers well-known national and international furniture and interior decoration brands. Rel rel reliability and constant further development, innovation ideas and inspiring working atmosphere will continue to determine the success of liner in the future. As part of the Signa Retail Group, Lina, with 16 furniture stores right now, from Vienna to Salzburg, is one of the largest furniture retailers. This brings me to the financial situation. Uh, our fixed assets are 7 million uh, euros. Our working capital is around 170 million. And our equity is around 40 million. And our income statement is here with a turnover of 95 million, a gross profit of 95 million also, and a profit from 60 million. Our market entry strategy would be to go first with direct exporting to e-commerce based on our own marketplace uh, through all, all the e-commerce uh, places, for example, with our own site in Spanish. And after that, we would, uh, after developing a better inside of the market, we would like to build a factory in Chile and sell them there with our own stores. Our benefit uh, of direct exporting would be the, that we have the full control of the product and attractive returns on the export. Uh, we would save costs and we would know our customers better. Thank you for attention. Thank you Thanks so much. Okay, that leaves us with our last presentation. Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, um, who will be the co-host for the last presentation? I will be the one for Lukawa. Yes, okay. Jenna, you are the co-host. Okay, thank you. So, can you see my screen now? Yep. Okay, perfect. Yes, we can. Looking good. Okay. So good afternoon, good evening, everyone. Um, 
let me start with just a few words about my own background. Uh, I'm currently involved in the bachelor degree program of European management uh, and economy. And I also work part-time and admire to be in multicultural environments such as this one. So I'm also looking forward to great negotiation tonight. And uh, well, now let's go down to business. <laughs> So uh, I have the uh, chance to, today to present Espresso Mobile. It's an Austrian company. Uh, and as you know, after water, coffee is the most popular drink wor worldwide with over 400 billion cups being consumed each year. So the pleasurable experience from coffee drinking plays a key role in many cultures around the world providing an occasion for friends, family, and colleagues to connect. And in 2012, uh, two Austrian entrepreneurs have recognized that in the ongoing battle for attention, that only those who manage to surprise the consumers in a positive way will come and stay relevant and successful. And in their opinion, uh, you can win the hearts of your consumers uh, with the passion for people, passion for service, passion for knowledge, and passion for business. And they founded Espresso Mobile, the first mobile coffee provider in Austria. So no matter the event you're planning, they have the proper tools and the best portafilter coffee machines but only when their top trained personable baristi take over the machines they can create truly memorable coffees like espresso cappuccino or latte macchiatos uh, today espresso mobile is represented by 43 vehicles 25 rolling coffee machines uh, 70 trained barista 22 locations 2000 event days per year 900,000 servings per year and 150,000 liters of water per year. Uh, so uh, they offer uh, hot beverages and cold beverages uh, and their business is built on the following three columns. Uh, so frequency, it's about locations, events and B2B promotion and coffee shops. Then the brand, Facebook, Instagram, public relation and storytelling and sales. So they have a system, they sell products and they also have a barista academy. So uh, the, about the uh, market entry strategy, they have a franchise concept uh, which they have implemented suc successfully already. And I would like to show you a short video. It's really short. So uh, they have already uh, successfully implemented it in Azerbaijan, Oman, Abu Dhabi, and Dubai, and uh, Chile might be the next. So thank you for your attention. Thank you so much. All right. So it is now time for me to create the breakout sessions for your negotiations. I will try to be as quick as possible. 
and um, please stay in the meeting but come back at 9 p.m. in Vienna, so in nine minutes. Then we will start the breakout sessions and you will have your negotiations. Okay. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, es bueno. <laughs> <laughs> See you soon. Bye, Miss okay. Barbara. So, Barbara, can you hear me? Who's that? No, I can't hear you. Sorry, I, I was just like, everyone can hear you, actually. Oh, okay. So, I thought you were going to create a breakout rooms and wanted to ask you how you can join the breakout rooms and to listen and watch and negotiate. Yes, of course. Sure. I can also move you between the different breakout rooms okay. that have students from your group. I'll be very interested in the express movie first, of course, and the liner thing to see how Sorry, come again. Uh, the liner presentation by Anita and the Express Mo Mobile by Chiloka. Um, you'd like to have the video. So, okay. So whatever breakout room they're in, I would like to, you know, kind of yeah. look Okay, in. yeah, yeah, sure. Sure, I can move you into these rooms then. Okay. There, Mr. Sabino, can you check the chat, please?
Okay, so I will start the breakout sessions now. Some of you will not get an invitation um, immediately. Um, I will move you into the sessions once they have started. It should take another two minutes. And um, our Chilean colleagues, you know, some of you are supposed to press the record button to record the negotiation. Please don't forget to do that. Barbara, maybe you can put Vicente with the Tika group. Tika group. I already added him to a session. I'm not sure why he's still okay. there. He's joined the group then. All right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Shay and Razak, would you like to join some sessions? Right. Razak, you said you'd like to join. This session that has Tiona in. That will be session four. So I'll move you to session four. Okay. And Shay, what about you? Um, yeah. I mean, do, I, do I have? It was probably with my students, right? Yeah. I can go anywhere. All right. <laughs> we have so many groups. <laughs> I'll move you first, Teresa, and then I'll move Shay. <laughs> oh. Good idea. Okay. So, a I'm lot working. more students. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. laughs> 83 people is a lot. Yeah. Okay. So we have. Um, Move you to this session with MKA. He's easy to find. And it's not such a big session, so you're bound to hear him talk. <laughs> right, there you go. Did you get the invite? Okay. 
Hello. Did you get thrown yeah. out of the meeting? Okay, I will add you to your sessions. Um, could you just remind me uh, which companies you presented? So Natalie, you were one of the presenters. And uh, that was which company? Can you remind me? Uh, I don't know. Um, class, uh, uh, I'm here. Class correct? Yes? No. I will move you. Did, did you present? Which company did you present? Natalie, well, Ta Tamaya Juice, right? Yeah. Okay, I will move you to your colleagues. Professor, um, could you move in me uh, for this? My internet is very uh, unloaded, please. Which, which company did you work on? She, he uh, was the one that you just put me in, in breakout room six. They wanted to, they said he couldn't get in. You couldn't get in. Ah, okay. That's why I came out again. Okay. Please. And they don't know which company to talk about. They all have different companies. <laughs> okay, right, he's in breakout session. Um, company six is Colum. And then one of ours, whichever one they decide on. Okay, yeah, because they said they all had different ones, I guess, so <laughs> they couldn't decide which one so to talk few. about. We have so few students. I had to move. There were there is one room where there's only one of our students. Yeah, that's the one that's the one you put me, I think. Can you put me back into that number six? Um if you have a look at the bottom of your screen where it says breakout session, just click on there again and click on join. Because you're still in that session. Oh, okay, great. Hello. Hello. Did you get thrown out? Or would you yes. like to join a different room? Yes, exactly. <laughs> Which room would you like to join? Which company did you work on? I am with Connie de la o sea, Connie Galan. Constanza Galan. Ah, right, found her. Okay, I'll move you to that room then. Um but I cannot see you. You are actually, did you, did you click on, um, ah, okay, I, I found it now. Found how I can move you. 